welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Janika, and today we are going to be discussing um, episode 6 of Love is Blind, so that final episode from the very first drop. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. The episode's not going to be very long, but again, as promised, we're going to be talking about the article um, which I'll probably do at the beginning before we hop into the episode. Um, and then we are also going to be doing the predictions because I forgot to do at the end of episode five, as promised. So I'm going to be doing that now as well. I'm going to be doing that before we hop into the episode, but the actual episode itself is going to be, um, a little, um, shorter. So, Let's go into predictions, what I kind of predict here. And this, again, might change. Uh, and I'll explain that after watching the sixth episode. Th- my predictions here are going to be changing, but I'm going to go based off of what I said, like right after the reveals for everybody. So Garrett and Taylor, who was our very first couple um, that uh, matched, I said, yes, I really do believe it's a yes. However, from what I see is coming up in the next few episodes, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Um, I do think that if it ends up being a no, um, I think that she's going to be the one to say no. So there's that. Tyler and Ashley, that was a percent yes. That's yes for them. That's what I said then, and that's what I'm still saying. Monica and Steven. I also say yes. Again, though, from what I see in the next upcoming episodes, I'm a little scared. And um, I don't know what's going to happen. I I have, from listening to um, Reality Gaze and their theory from their, uh, I think the the sixth episode, or the fifth episode, sorry. that maybe there's cheating on his part, then it would be a no in that case. Cause I don't think like if you're already going to be doing some, some nonsense, but prior to even get into the freaking aisle, then uh, the altar, then, I, then it's, it's going to be a no, but I hope and pray that's not what's happening. I hope that they can get through it because I think they're really into each other. Um, so it's a yes for me on that, but depending on what happens here in the next coming episodes, and if that is true, then if it's a no, then it's going to be her saying no. And honestly, if that is what happens, I don't even think they're making it to the altar. So next, Tim and Alex. So here I said yes. Hesitantly, though, I did say yes. Now, after watching the sixth episode, the episode here that we're going to be talking about soon, I think it's a no. I think it's a no. I think their communication styles are very different. I don't think they're going to be able to figure that out in time for them to feel comfortable in getting married to each other. So for that reason, I think it's going to be a no. Who's going to say no? I mean, honestly, I think they're both going to say no, but, um, or you know what? Actually, scratch that. Based on what I saw in this episode, I think that if anyone's going to say no, it's going to be him, not her. And we'll talk about it then, but I I think it's a no. I'm kind of watching that. Um, but we'll see. Hannah and Nick, it's an absolute no. And I said it even then, and I'm I'm still sticking to it. It's an absolute no. Um, and then the last couple is so I think I've been saying Ramses, but I think it's Ramses. So Ramses and Marissa, I said no here. And honestly, mm, I still say no. I just, I do. I don't, I just don't see it. I don't. Like I, I can understand that they're definitely connecting. <laughs> they're connecting, all right. Um, but I still say no. I'm not confident that 
I, there are certain things that I think is going to be difficult for for him to overcome, if anything. Not so much her. Like, I think she would, I mean, I'm sure she has standards. I'm not saying that she doesn't. Um, but I just, I don't think, I think, uh, I just don't think they're going to mesh well. And also seeing kind of what happens in the next coming episodes and her being very flirty with, with Bodan, which, I mean, damn, I mean, he is hot. Um, <laughs> but it's, I just don't see it. I just don't. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to work. And if anyone's going to say no, like I said, I think it's going to be him. Um, but surprise me, maybe it'll be her. Uh, so yeah, those are the predictions. Let's just quickly talk about this article that I was talking about as to what we can kind of expect with Leo and, and Brittany. So again, if you haven't watched the sixth episode, for whatever reason you're following me, there are spoilers. So if you, you know, haven't watched the episode yet, stop here. If you want to watch it, stop here just in case. I don't know what spoilers are going to be coming, but that's what's happening. So, so as we know, as this article says, not, Love is Blind doesn't always follow every couple. However, which I think is definitely being stressed here and, and kind of the, the issue that I know I'm having that I know other podcasters that I, that, you know, I listen to, I haven't listened to every, um, I only really listened to maybe two that would cover Love is Blind, but, um, I haven't listened to the other ones yet. Um, that the fact that we're seeing the storyline with Leo and Brittany, and then you're not following it, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm having a definitely an issue. I don't know if viewers are having an issue with this, listeners having an issue with this. Why show us this 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 fruit and then not give it to us? Um, so but yeah, as we know, we did get that title card in the episode, the episode, I think it was five, that said Brittany and Leo were not one of the six couples chosen by reducers to continue their journey in Mexico. They took their own trip to well, this says Mexico, but it was actually Miami and broke off their engagement weeks later. So the qu question that I think all of us are kind of having and what's interesting in this article as well is why feature them on the series at all and then not follow them? So Chris Colin has the answer for us. So he says, quote, there are different ways that non-scripted shows are produced. Sometimes you have an idea of where things are going while you're filming. And we don't. We film everything as it happens. And then after it ends, we piece together how we got there. We have the budget to follow five couples and sometimes we stretch to six. And we figure out how to, how to stack our crews. But then why did you pick someone else over them? Because this would have been a fantastic storyline to follow. We want to see this shit show unfold. And why wouldn't you have followed them? Like, we're okay to have some shit shows in there, especially because we have, um, we have Hannah and Nick. Why wouldn't you have added that extra layer of drama with having Leo and Brittany? We've seen it before. We saw it with Shane and um, what was her name again? Shit. Well, well, season three was Shane. Uh, I know her name was similar to that. Where Shanae, something like that. Um, and the, that that storyline in episode in, in season three, we saw it with them, and it worked. We've seen it plenty of times going forward. Like it worked, and why not? continue that forward that's an interesting thing like why would you have picked someone else over them like we don't usually have two solid couples and I feel with well at least at this point anyways but anyway because I had to just take a quick little break there and I lost my train of thought so let's continue so yeah so he went on to say the season seven couples got engaged so we had to one had to be cut um 
he says, when we make that decision as to who to follow, if we have more couples that got engaged, we make a decision as to which couples we think are authentic. We don't want just authenticity, Chris. We would like to have some drama. We would like that. Now, uh, okay, I'm not saying that we didn't have authentic couples in the UK and we still loved it. We did. We loved it with authentic couples. But this was such a shit show and you gave us this sweet, just candy with the whole Leo, Hannah, Nick, Brittany situation. And then you take it away from us. Don't show us then. Don't show us their story, the the lead up to their story, if you're not going to continue following them afterwards. Honestly, you have the power to edit someone else out. You could have edited, like, I love seeing Garrett and Taylor. I love seeing um, Ashley and Tyler. Don't get me wrong, but they're two solid couples at this point that we could have taken one of them out. And you could have included Leo and Brittany. Like, what? And you're really trying to sit here and tell me that Hannah and Nick are authentic? Maybe he is, but she isn't. (laughs) You know what I mean? I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. So, anyway, he continues on to say, And when I say authentic, I mean most authentically likely to actually, wow, that was a word salad, be at the altar and say, I do, sir, 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 are you for real right now? Are you for, he's not serious, y'all. Come on now. Come on now. Really? (laughs) I'm so dead right now. He's not serious. He's not serious. So you thought, so you thought. Season five was going to be okay. That people, those people were all going to say yes. You thought even last season that you, you had people on this show who were in relationships with other people come off with that bullshit. Are you serious? You had people lying about whether or not they look like Megan Fox and that, that was authentic. Jimmy and Chelsea didn't even make it to the freaking altar. Like, are you kidding me right now? Are you for real? Are you for real? Don't bullshit me. Anyways, let's continue. So, who is really genuinely on that path? We felt at the time that the six couples we did end up following were the ones that felt more on a gut level, had a real shot to say, I do. He word solids that they were really invested in saying I do. The couple that I think felt least likely to do that were Leo and Brittany. Well, he wasn't wrong, but you think Hannah and Nick are? (laughs) Like, really? (laughs) Okay. So we made a decision not to follow them after the pods ended. It's important to note that um, of everyone, Brittany was the only one that didn't say I love you back to her fiance. That's fair but she's not the only one. Can I please direct you back to um, Irina and Zach? She literally said she wasn't attracted to him. (laughs) And mind you, there wasn't much to follow because they didn't make it past, where were they in probably Mexico? They didn't make it past that, mind you, I get it. Um, And we had to follow him in bliss, fine. But really? I mean, Hannah doesn't even look back at Nick. (laughs) Despite her saying, I love you, people can say, I love you, and not really truly mean it. Anyway, their stories were very intertwined with other cast members. The producers did follow, obviously, Hannah and Nick. Leo was torn between Hannah and Brittany, as we know. And Hannah first wanted to pursue Leo more, then ultimately went with Nick because, well, Brittany let that cat out the bag. Um, so Chris said, you start to realize because we did follow Hannah and Nick, Leo was such a big part of Hannah's story. Okay. You can't really tell Hannah's story without telling Leo's story. And you can't really tell Leo's story without telling Brittany's story. That's how we told their story. 
They're tremendously interesting people. And then we just had to own the fact that we've made the decision not to follow them. Our gut level decisions have been correct all the way through. Let me repeat that just so you guys didn't, just in case you guys didn't catch that. Let me, I'm going to go slow. Ready? Okay. Our gut level decisions have been correct all the way through. Sir, season five. (laughs) That's all I'm going to keep saying. Season five. And sir, you're also the creator of Merit at First Sight. Season 17. Which is why I'm not even, I can't even, I can't even bring myself to start watching season 18. Sir. Okay, let's continue. Anybody that we've chosen not to follow or anybody that has left the experiment has never ended up together. That's certainly what happened with them. It doesn't mean it wouldn't be interesting to follow. It just ended up kind of in the place that we thought it would. He's not wrong. All the cast members members are informed that they may not be chosen to be followed. So that explains why they said, well, if we're not going to go to Mexico, can we like go to Miami? That explains that, why that was brought up. Um, In this case, Brittany and Leo decided that since they weren't chosen, they do their own trip to Miami. I think certainly they'll be at the reunion. Yes. Thank you, Chris Cohen. And maybe someday we actually will follow more couples into the world. Yeah, yeah, you need to. Because if you have things like this, you need to. Just put this little extra budget there, you know? And if you don't get that opportunity, then you can put that budget into something else. Uh, you know, just a little extra for, the, for that part. That's all. That's all I'm asking. Um, he says, I would love that. It's just complicated and a lot of story to tell. We are okay with it. Just do it. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how that turns out for the, um, for the reunion. Hopefully they'll be there. Um, so we can get some, I, I want everything. I want it all. I want, I want it all. Uh, but yeah, that's basically that with the, all of that. So let's jump in to the actual episode now. So episode six, six things I hate about you. It was actually 10. It was actually 10, 10 things I hate about you, which is actually the name of the fucking movie. You could have just, you could, you, you could have just, you could have just, you know what I mean? Anyway. So Marissa and Ramses are not sleeping much. They're doing a lot of a lot of play, a lot of horizontal play. That's what they're doing. And Alex, she's a snorer. She's like, shut up. No, I'm not. Liar. You you know? So Monica looks gorgeous without makeup. Like she, like she doesn't need it. She doesn't need the makeup. She looks no different with or without the makeup. So wow. Good for her. Um, she does ask him, like, do I look good without makeup? And he's like, <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> like, you look good with or without, no matter. <laughs> so Garrett apparently screams in his sleep. Um, there was this little show that I used to watch called, um, I don't know if anyone else watched it called, um, Prodigal Son. And he did that too. He did that, though, because his dad was a serial killer. Um, it's a really good show. I think it's on Netflix now, and I ha- never got around to finishing it, but I do want to finish it. It was it was a really good show. It was, like, Michael... What was the same? The guy who plays Aro in Twilight, him, he was a dad. <laughs> I don't know. It was Michael Sheen? Is that right? Is that his name? I don't remember. We're just going to call him Aro and call it a day. So... <laughs> um. So she's like, we need more tape. <laughs> she tells him that I loved what you said in the pods, but now I, she says she needs to see the actions behind the words as well, which totally got. And then they get paddle boards and they go into the ocean and they're paddle boarding and Garrett's doing like yoga on the paddle boards, downward dog, all of that. He's doing all of that. Um, 
And then he falls in. Because balance. Ramses and Marissa. We see them doing salsa dancing. Which they're having a lot of fun doing. Which salsa dancing is fun. Um, Not much else to say about that. We are now headed to the group meeting. The couples are meeting. And although it's not like drama of past. Like with, you know. I think that was also season three with Jarrett and what's her face who was with the guy who cop who kept um playing the what was it the ukulele or something what, what would be him <laughs> um and um not like that but we did get some interesting situations here we'll talk about it so we got Tyler and Ashley and he says that you wouldn't have liked me before because he's he's basically i guess trying to say that he was um not necessarily a nice guy i think he actually uses the term that he was mean um i I, i'm not sure but i'm just gonna probably say he probably was a player he probably played the game like we all do really um and uh because i've I've definitely said stuff stuff like that before i've definitely said to my boyfriend you would not have liked me before you would not have liked me before i would have been a bitch you wouldn't have liked me i would have yelled at you all the time you wouldn't have liked me you would not have liked me and that's okay everyone comes into your life when they're supposed to and that's that's fine like you know it ain't ain't no problem there but he says that but she says, you know, nothing will change my mind. Um, and yeah. So Tim, we see Tim and Alex and he's getting like a hat and he looks perfectly fine in the hat. He, there's nothing wrong with the hat at all. I think he looks a little, he looks kind of suave, but she hates the hat. She says the brim is too big. And I'm like, what is wrong with these women? I'm sorry. I really, truly her, her and Hannah, who gives a fuck? If he likes the hat and he feels good in the hat, like it gives me that level of um um oh what was her name? Laura, I think was her name who was with Jeremy, um, before Sarah. And she had an issue with his Hawaiian shirts. That's how this feels. Who cares? I mean, I didn't like his Hawaiian shirts either, but that's because I just didn't like him. I liked him then and now I don't. So him and his stupid Hawaiian shirts can go away anyways. But like, generally speaking, who cares? You know? But she, yeah, she doesn't like it. She says that she doesn't like his taste in fashion. And I'm like, what's wrong with his fashion? He just looks, he look. who cares? <laughs> Again, maybe I'm just a person who's like, I don't have bad fashion, but I just don't put a lot of emphasis on fashion. So I'm like, what's the problem with what he's wearing he looks fine um so they kind of talk about the fact that she's a little messy he's maybe a little more neat a little more you know proper with that kind of everything has its place kind of thing where she's like you know she's a little more messy and he says listen i don't care like you can have your corner don't come into my corner though, but you have your corner. And he's like, as long as you're not dirty. And she's like, no, there's a difference between messy and dirty, which yes, there is a difference between being messy and being dirty. She's not dirty. She's just messy. <laughs> um, then we have Monica and Steven and they're doing acupuncture, which I think I've talked about this before. I've definitely had a fear of acupuncture um, because um, I have a childhood nightmare. <laughs> I was seeing my mom being stuck with needles and it freaked me out. Um, but I've done acupuncture since and it's an, it's a great experience. Um, kind of miss it actually. It's been a little bit. But the thing with that is I would rather the professional do the needles. But this guy lets Monica put the needles in in him and in particular does the one in his head and i'm like listen listen because he's never done it before and he's definitely being a bit a sport about this so you know he's not like having any issues but when they said like when she's like, can i put one in and, and he says yeah sure and i'm like can we do that <laughs> um but yeah she was the one in his head and 
she says, oh my God, I like her. She says, you know, the needle in your head, it's kind of looking familiar. It's kind of looking like your boner. Ma'am. She says he constantly gets boners. Like it's just like it's poking her thigh, it's poking her arm, it's poking her stomach, it's poking everything. And I'm like, is it poking the place that it needs to be poking? <laughs> but she says, like, he's getting boners. And I'm just like, that's fucking hot. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen does things to me, things that I wasn't expecting him to do to me, but he does. He does it. And I'm like, wow, like he's not like, he's not like the guys in UK. He's not like, like so hot. You just, you're drooling over these men. It's not even about that, but he just has like this. He's just hot. He's a man. And I love it. And the fact that she talks about his boners, I'm like, yes. But he says, he's like, listen, I'm a man. The, the wind blows wrong and I'm going to go boner. <laughs> I fucking love it. Oh, man. Anyway. But he constantly wants to jump her bones. And um, so, yeah. And she does explain to him, you know, she was worried about getting the egg with him because she, as she says, she did get it very easily, gets the egg easily and has nothing to do with how a person looks. Um, Which I think, honestly, getting the egg has nothing to do with how a person looks. It has everything to do how a person acts. But she said, like, she worried about that, which I don't think she's worrying about that now. <laughs> and he says, I don't think I've ever gotten the egg. And she said, oh, yeah, well, women do. And I think that's really true. It's actually something I've, men don't really get the ick because honestly, I think men can look past all of that just as long as they can get some satisfaction. With women, it's like, we can get it. Now, sometimes I think it can be stupid reasons that women can get the ick, like Hannah, for example, with the whole duck situation. But I think like if legitimately, like there are legitimate reasons that a person can get an ick can get the egg. And honestly, I think that can come at any point. It doesn't have to be just right at the beginning. It can come at any point. Cause I mean, there are people that I've been involved with that I now have the quote unquote the ick for, and I would never touch again. Like I just, I no, thank you. Um, it has nothing to do with how you look. It just has everything to do with how you've acted. Um, so yeah, like I, we tend to get the ick because we don't, because it ain't gonna be you, it's gonna be someone else. It's fine. Um, so yeah, now we're at the couple meeting, the couple's meet up. And Steven says, Um, does anyone think Garrett kind of looks like a middle class Chris Evans? And that's really funny because I mean, I should have known that maybe they <laughs> got it from, I actually don't even know. Like, I guess, like, I, well, I think they had actually watched it, but I was listening to reality gaze and they mentioned that and I'm like oh wait a minute but it's true when they said that I'm like oh yeah he kind of does have like he's like a middle class ma- Captain America that's what they said it's Captain America and I'm just like yeah it's true he kind of has this Chris Evans look to him and Chris Evans is hot <laughs> but he does he kind of does um but yeah So everyone seems to disagree with him, but I'm like, I agree with you 100%. Um, But then Hannah tells Marissa um, that, you know, he doesn't want to really really want to talk about sex very much because of his reputation and everything. And I'm like, I don't think he cares about that anymore, (laughs) personally, because he's out there talking about everybody else's sex life. (laughs) But anyway, then she tells her about the whole duck situation. And the thing that pissed me off here about Hannah is that she completely misconstrues everything that happened. She literally is sitting here with Marissa telling her that, oh, you know, that um, 
he they're like making fun of me for being jealous that you know she's being a dumb like a jealous dumb bitch or something like that she definitely said bitch somewhere in there and like you know he was just like you know not making any better or whatever blah 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 like she's just completely misconstruing how this interaction went down and i'm just like where did you get this because that's not what happened that is not at all what happened and it just kind of lends like shows me how misinformed or how she processes things in her head how incorrect she is what are you talking about that's a problem so either she's completely processed this incorrectly and in her mind she blew it up or she is purposely making all of this up um so for her benefit and i think it's more that honestly i think it's probably even a mix of of two things but anyway they kind of talk of the men kind of talk about how the ladies you know probably didn't really drop the l bomb very much and it's true they didn't um then nick tells the guys about the whole situation with the duck the whole duck um situation but he goes a little further by saying when they got back to the room hannah just out in the open is writing down these these things these eight or so 10 or so things um of what she doesn't like about him basically and probably basing it off of the whole duck situation and she didn't even hide it she kind of just left it there on the nightstand for him to see that was done on purpose she did that on purpose she wanted you to see it she wanted you to see it and honestly for that it's like okay you're manipulative you're a little bit cuckoo magoo and i again i'm just gonna keep saying it you're not ready for this and if you like he'll say to her later if you can't communicate those things to me then like what are we doing here like you need to communicate those things directly to him like write it down if you want to figure out a game plan of what you want to say to him fine but you need to then communicate that to him directly don't leave this piece of paper for him to find and then you, you what do you like, how, how do you think that's going to make him feel she has no regard for how anyone else feels she only cares about herself and that's just not how you operate in in a couple you can't just think about how you feel you have to think about how he is going to feel about something as well um like it's, she's very selfish, very manipulative. But yeah, he's he's talking about this. Um, and the guys are like, that is a lot for just that incident. It's true. She's completely, though, blown this up in her head of what happened that day. And like I said, and I'm going to keep saying it, if you have an issue with him doing this with... um with somebody else and you're like they're snapping at him and you know tr- you know like what the hell like treating him like a like a, like a child really um not even a child you don't treat children even like that but treating him like an animal a like dog then like then you do it with him then you have fun with him like <sighs> anyway um then nick is brought over to the quote-unquote hot seat with the women and you're thinking oh no oh no but they actually are really they're they're okay everyone got i think a chance in the hot seat and and they were pretty easy on all the guys including nick um but they got like a flashlight on him being like you're in interrogation um but she does then talk to hannah about what happened with the whole 10 things i hate about you situation and she's like but do you like understand how i felt though like do you did you understand like how i was feeling in that moment well did you think about his feelings in that moment and he says that he's like what about me 
Like, did you think about how I would feel reading that? Like, that's horrible. And we're going to get some one of the things that she that she wrote down because he brings it up here. And he tells her like that whole situation was irrelevant. That woman was completely irrelevant. Like she's well, she was she was older. I don't know how old, but she was older. And it's like, girl, like she probably has her own man there or whatever. Like, you know, like calm down. Not, not everyone wants to have sex with your man. Like, come on. So, um, but she says, like, you know, you have to think about like my feelings. Like, I'm just telling you how I feel, which, yes, in a normal situation a more relevant situation i would agree with you and say that yes you can't invalidate her feelings you need to understand where she's coming from her feelings are her feelings you may thought one thing about the situation but she's going to think something differently and you both have to understand each other in that moment she says she understands him i don't know if she really does and he's not saying that he doesn't understand her so i get that but honestly, in this situation, I Hannah, shut up. Shut all the way up. You're being absolutely ridiculous. If you wanted to make sure that no woman's going to talk to him ever, then go ride the fucking ducks with him. And then you can go back to your room and you can ride him. Because again, like the thing is, is like, it's all about this man riding the stuck and she's conflating that to or yeah she's she's making that be like well men shouldn't be riding things well girl <laughs> there are some men that ride but again it's like so what a man can ever horseback ride a, a man can ever ride anything you know what i mean like he can never ride like a bull or something or an, um an electric bull like he can never do that like you're being absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, she's she's ridiculous. I I don't I don't know, man. But then um he's a so about that last thing, the last bullet point that you wrote down, Delulu. What does that mean? Um I mean, it, I think that means um delusional. And you're just like, yeah. He's like, you think I'm delusional? yikes girl you're literally out here saying he's delusional well, okay in that whole situation how is that delusional i think what you the better word if you wanted to use any word really about how what happened here would be unaware um of how maybe you were feeling in the moment but not delusional to say someone is delusional is to say that they are in their own world. They believe their bullshit. All of that. That's delusion, which is what you are actually. Go, f that's go figure. <laughs> but then Stephen and Monica are talking, and he's talking um, a lot because this is actually post the meetup. He's talking a lot about how he felt about this. And I think mainly talking about Alex and Tim. And we're going to come back to that. And she says, baby, I love you. I'm obsessed with you. And he's like, oh shit, am I rambling? <laughs> so clearly this has been an issue before that he, when he gets started, he doesn't stop. And she's like, yeah, like you're talking a lot. I can't get a word in. Um, he's like, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. And he's kind of chuckling about it. And she's like, I know you think it's funny, I know you think it's cute, but it's actually not that cute anymore because like it feels like you're not including me in the conversation, you're not including me in the space, which I think was actually really well said. So she's like, you know, please let me let me get a word in. <laughs> and but yes, we're talking about Tim and Alex. And they kind of feel like something is off with them. That they're, they're, there's there's something missing here. There's there's they're not something isn't right, and we're gonna get to it. Um, Hannah talks to Nick about feeling disrespected, and I'm like, girl, 
where, when, how, and why were you disrespected? Because I don't see it. I really don't. He did not disrespect you. He was having fun. And if someone else decides, let me come help this guy out because he's literally by himself riding these ducks, then like that's not him being disrespectful. He's not disrespecting you. Like in this situation, I would not care that my boyfriend was doing something like this. I wouldn't care. Um, I just wouldn't. And especially with me being right there, like I'm like, what's he gonna do right like I, I don't I wouldn't care about this and the fact that she's making such a big deal over this is just like you're now feeling disrespected girl calm all the way down please and she says that she was like touching on you and joking about me so First of all, she wasn't joking about you. She did say, oh, she's jealous. You don't have to be jealous. Like, she just said that. And that's true. You don't have to be. And it, him, I mean, he was like, I, I don't know. I know he definitely touched her at some point, but like, what, he touched her shoulder? Oh, God forbid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who cares? And... He says, like, what if the tables, she says to him, sorry, what if the tables were turned and I was doing that with an older guy? And I'm just like, he literally looks at her like, I want to give a fuck. <laughs> what am, what am, what am, really? I want to give a fuck. But the thing is, it's like, you would have done way worse than what he did to you. Because you have completely blown this up in your head. And she's like, you know, we're getting married. We have things like we need to address. I think she has a list of things she wants to address with him. Like another list. Ten things we need to address. Like, oh God. And listen, seriously, this is what I'm going to say. She wrote down ten things I hate about you when really she's writing down ten ways to lose a guy. Or how to lose a guy in ten days. That's what she's doing. She thinks she's in ten things I hate about you, but really she's in how to lose a guy in 10 days. Like, she's doing it. We, this is it. This is real world. He's no Matthew McConaughey, but here we are. <laughs> and she is definitely, um, no, what's her name again? Why isn't it coming to me? Uh, Kate, it's right there, guys. It's right there. Um, I'm going to stop now because how did I not remember her? I want to say Goldie Hawn. Huh? Like, that's not right. That's our mama. But anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. But um, yeah, it's um, Kate Hudson. There we go. I'm fine. I'm fine, y'all. She's definitely no Kate Hudson. And he is definitely Matthew McConaughey. But here we are with 10, 10, I had to lose a guy in 10 days. Anyway, and what I loved here, what I loved here is him going back at her with it and he says okay i agree because you want to know why i'm not the only one who's delusional mike fucking drop <laughs> wow good for you my guy anyway let's finish this up the next day we got alex and we hear a knock at the door and it's like why is there a knock at the door and then the knock at the door came from Tim. And it's like, why is Tim knocking on the door? Well, something happened, y'all. He explains that we left the party and everything was fine. Everything was great. And then we kind of find, I guess, something must have happened. Something, we don't know exactly what that something was, but something happened. And he's like, you know, you're not communicating with me about I feel like I guess like he wanted to have a conversation. She maybe wasn't in the mood to have a conversation. She was tired. She just wanted to shower and go to sleep. But if that's what she wanted, like she never communicated that with him. Um, and he felt shunned. He felt disrespected because I think like 
she they ended up having an argument about it. He said he also felt silenced by her because every time he tried to have a word in edgewise, she would cut him off. Um she also I think covered his mouth during the argument, which is definitely a way of her silencing him. There's no if ands buts about it. She was trying to silence him. She says that the reason she did that was because he, she was trying to stop him from being upset or being angry. And it's like, no, girl, no. And if he is going to be angry and upset, then let him be angry and upset. You do not get to muffle that. Ride the wave and you're 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 going to be better for it. But the fact that you put your hand over his mouth is really just, that is that right there, Hannah, honey, honey, Hannah, honey, that is disrespect. <laughs> You don't do that. And um, and she says, like, you know, again, justifies the reasons for cutting him off is because she's trying to explain to him how she's feeling. Um, and, he, you know, he didn't hear her, but he kept saying, like, I'm trying to communicate, but you're cutting me off. <laughs> Someone's cutting off somebody here, right? Um, and even in this moment, if we noticed when he's saying something, she's cutting him off. Um, so this kind of goes to show like, okay, well, clearly then that's probably what was happening then too. And in, in a heated situation, you're, you can't let him speak. Um, but he felt unhurt. Um, he says, listen, my love language is listening. And I think that is on both sides, not just on him, but both sides. His love language is for him to be heard and listened to. And he didn't feel that from her. He says he chose to remove himself um, from the situation because he needed to have that space, which is obviously something we have heard about before. When he says that he's not an arguer, he doesn't do that. He'd rather just remove himself from the situation. And that's exactly what he did here. But she felt that he wasn't coming back at all because like she, he was packing up. He, she felt like he was never coming back. And I think that was maybe an issue for her, obviously. And he said, honestly, it crossed my mind. And I love that he's being honest here. He said, it did cross my mind that I wasn't coming back. And he felt like things were being like, implied about him i guess at the party by the other women um about what kind of person he is which i didn't see that but maybe there was something that was being said that we missed um um but he says that i love you you got a ring on your finger but i need to get back to a place where i can see you as my wife or i can see you as a mother of my kids and the fact that he is like for me Everyone's different, but for me, if I'm going backwards on how I view you in my life, if we're in a relationship, that is disastrous for the relationship. That just tells me we're never getting back there. So when I see him in this moment, and we're going to talk a little bit about he's literally disassociating, is to me, he's never getting there again. He's never getting there. And this is why I feel like. I think I said about them, I don't even feel they're going to make it to the altar. I don't even think they're making it because like, I just, I, I don't think, I don't think he can come back from this. And that's really, it's, it's upsetting. Um, but um, she says like, where does this leave us? And he says, I don't know. And I think that's probably maybe an, an honest thing. Like, I don't think he really has an answer. And she tells him, come here. And he does, when she said, come here, she was reaching out for him to hold her hand. So he, he does hold her hand and she says, come closer. And he's like, I'd rather not. So we see here in this moment, her literally trying to comfort him. And I don't know if it's being manipulative on her part. Honestly, I feel like it, it is a little bit, but I do see her trying to like wrap herself around him so that like please don't leave me type situation but at the same time I think that that's not also respecting where he is right now and I think you're gonna have to do a lot more than 
holding him in this moment to make him get back to where they were prior to all of this. So, um, but she does go closer to him and she asks, like, do you want to continue sleeping in separate rooms? And he says that I can't answer that right now. He doesn't have an answer for that right now. Listen, he doesn't have an answer for much of anything at the moment. So her asking him these questions in this moment is just inappropriate. Um, he also says that I had every intention of this being our last conversation. So he's literally having to switch his mind here to be like, okay, so this isn't the end fully yet, but maybe it is the end for him. Like, we don't know that. We don't know what he's thinking. But honestly, if his thoughts had a words, it would say, I'm done. Because he is literally in this moment, she is hugging him and you can see him actively shutting down, actively disassociating from this. And it's actually really heartbreaking to see like his eyes, like they're dull. There's nothing there. There's nothing in his eyes. While the person who he's supposed to love is holding him, he is just like, he's not there. He, his physical form is there, but he himself is not there. It's really sad. It's really, really sad. But that is it for this episode. And that is it for the first dump of, of Love is Blind. So there's that. Um, what I'm planning to do is I want to get back to doing some of the 90 day stuff, which means there'll probably be a little bit of a pause for Love is Blind. Um, but we will get back to it probably early next week. So what the plan is going to be is we're going to do the next episode you're going to be getting is a bonus episode. I am going to talk about what that bonus episode is going to look like in that episode, but, um, we're going to be having another bonus episode, um, quote unquote, and then we will be hopping back in with 90 day. What I want to do is I'm going to do um, B90. So we're probably going to have about three episodes for you for B90. We're going to go through them. You probably will get them. I'll see about getting them to you guys over the weekend, but it will most likely be next week just so I can focus on doing notes, recording, and I'll get them everything out to you by um, sorry, next week. So B90 will probably be the, the thing I'm going to do next, get through those episodes. And then I'm going to go uh, back and we'll go back to Love is Blind and we'll probably do the three episodes again. The three episode, I think it was three that we got the next time. We'll do the next dump um, and then we will take a break again and go back to 90 Day. And that point, I think we'll be on three episodes again of Toe. We'll, we'll go through Toe and then hopefully by then we can kind of get back to some sort of normalcy. So until we kind of get through Love is Blind, I'm not even touching Married at First Sight right now. Again, haven't even watched it. So I have no clue what's going on with Married at First Sight currently. Um, so that's what's going to be happening. Until we get through Love is Blind, I am not touching Married at First Sight. So that's that. Again, if anything kind of interesting happens with it though, let me know and we'll talk about it. Um, and I do want to get Golden Bachelorette back in there as well because be a couple of episodes behind. Um, so we're going to do that. I haven't finished watching the last Golden Bachelor, uh, Bachelor Red episode yet, but I will still get the, um, the poll out of who you think is going to be winning Jones Heart at this, even without my own episode out. So I'll still be doing that. So look out for that. It should be coming soon. Um, and I'm a little scared because I think one of my options there um, isn't going to be there anymore, but I'm fine. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's basically it, uh, for this episode. Um, it was a little longer than I expected, but we did talk about other things, but, um, so yeah, that's basically it. We're going to take this break with Love is Blind for a bit. And the next episode, like I said, is going to be uh, the bonus episode. Um, and with that, uh, I'll explain what that episode is going to look like over there. But that is it for this episode.
So if you like what you heard, please rate, review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, don't forget that I uh, you can also share us with everyone in your life if you really love this. And I do want to read those reviews. I'm definitely getting five-star ratings, but I want to read those reviews. So send me those reviews and I will read those four and five-star reviews on the podcast. Also, we're on every one of your favorite podcast apps every one of them, including, you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to either Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. We also have our email, which is at Reality Tea Times 2 at Hotmail.com. Definitely want to hear from you guys. And we also have our new website where you can listen to all of these episodes. You can review the podcasts on there as well. You can connect with me in any way, all the stuff. It's all there. And you can find me there at www.realitytimes2, all spelled out, um, dot podpage dot I O, it's there. And don't forget, I also have my other podcast with my friend Mikkel, Next Week Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different topics. Um, but you can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps over there as well. Or you can also go to YouTube um, and you go to Next Take Podcast, as well as our website, which is solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. Um, so yeah, there's with that and that's basically that. And again, don't forget, if all of this information is overwhelming, we do have all of the links, everything in our show notes. But that is it for now, guys. Thanks. Bye.